Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Astrology Hub podcast. Today, we have a very, very special edition for you. So excited to be here with all of you. Thank you for joining. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Amanda Pua Walsh. I am the founder of Astrology Hub, and I am here with award-winning astrologer, author of Getting to the Heart of Your Chart, an astrologer with over 32 years of experience, not only learning, but also teaching and practicing astrology. He runs the London School of Astrology. And here's the really exciting part for us. He is the newest host of one of our regular shows here at Astrology Hub. And this new show is going to be called Frank Answers. And it's going to be the first show that we have where you can submit your questions. So questions about your life, questions about your chart, questions about things happening in the world and wanting to understand them from an astrological perspective. Um, things that you've heard about your own chart or your own uh, placements or transits that are coming that you would like an astrologer to address. And what we're so excited about with Frank is his approach because it is very much a empowering approach to astrology, helping you work with the transits and the different things in your chart and the different things in your life in a way that invites your participation and helps you see where you're not a victim to the things that are happening, but that you actually have an opportunity to work with the energies really productively. So Frank, welcome to the show. This is like our kickoff introductory show. We're not gonna be answering people's questions today, but we wanted to introduce the show and also cover the top five questions that astrologers hear over and over. So Frank, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so much, Amanda. It's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So tell us why, I mean, this has been a co-creation, everybody that's been happening behind the scenes for quite some time. We've been going back and forth and really getting clear on the idea. Frank, what is exciting you the most about having a regular show on the Astrology Hub platform and especially this, you know, people being able to submit their questions and you, you getting to answer them? Well, I I work a lot with with clients, with students, so it's it's natural. I get a lot of questions all the time. And I love the idea of being able to put them on video so people can refer to them, come back to them, um, be involved themselves, asking questions. But often uh, as you know, you know, students and uh, people will often not want to ask questions. They think it might be silly or uh, too uh, too personal or whatever it may be, and it stops them from doing that. So uh, I often say to students, if, um, if you've got a question, even if you think it's a, a dumb question, ask it because it's probably what other people are asking as well. So I love the idea of being able to uh, connect with everybody and share some experience, learn from them and provide what I what I can. What about the, um, the, the way that people tend to feel like they might be in a box or might be limited by their chart or what they read online about their placements or transits? What, I, I know we've talked about this before, but tell us about your experience with that and why you feel it's so important for us to start to dispel some of that stuff. Well, I, I think it's extremely important because now astrology is, astrology has always been popular. It's just had uh, a real uh, boom in the last probably five, ten years with the internet and a lot of people offering some amazing services. Uh, but sometimes with that comes uh, something that's less inspiring, less empowering than it really should be. And I think that it's important to understand that we co-create our lives. The chart is a remarkable map to help us navigate where we're going in our lives. And uh, a lot of people don't use it. A lot of people don't have access to that map or even think that it is a remarkable map. But when they start looking at it, even if it's simply looking at their sign or looking at the big three, the sun, moon, or ascendant, or going further, there's always an opportunity to use astrology to be inspiring, self-validating, to recognize that we all have a purpose. The chart reflects that beautifully. And so uh, it's it's an exciting time to be an astrologer and it's an exciting uh, time to, to have the internet to share that. Uh, but it is important to, to avoid those condemnatory uh, um, qualities of what, what, can, what you can read online. Uh, and it's, it's one of the, the big questions I get, as we'll be looking at later. 
Yes. Awesome. You know, I am so grateful for astrologers like you who are willing, who are excited about the expansion of astrology and seeing the beauty in more people getting to benefit from it, but then also helping us. I keep thinking of the word like kind of corral it in, like just so that we we maintain the integrity of it and also that it um, continues to be helpful and useful and not just another thing that makes people feel stuck, small, wrong, not enough, not good, you know, all those things. Yeah. So it's, I'm just so grateful because it's, it's, you're bringing this wisdom of all of your experience and all the teaching and all of the hours and hours and hours of working with people one-on-one -on -one, and you're bringing it to us in a, in a way that we can share it with many, many people at once. Yeah. So super grateful for that. Thank you. If any of you are interested in submitting questions for Frank, so let's go through a few examples of the kinds of questions that you can ask. But if you would like to submit your questions, it's totally free. The show is going to be once a week. Frank's going to be addressing one question a week. We're going to keep it pretty short. Like he's going to be thorough, but each week the, the episodes will be anywhere from like five to 20 minutes. And he'll just be addressing one question and going deep with one, one person and one, one person's question. But if you have questions that you'd like to submit, so something that's a transit that's coming up that you're feeling nervous about, uh, something in your chart that you're confused about, a situation in your life that you would love some astrological perspective about, you can go to astrologyhub.com slash frank answers. That's astrologyhub.com slash frank answers. Submit your question. Frank's going to be looking at those every single week, selecting questions to, um, to address live on the show. So, and that's going to be starting next week. So if you're one of the first people to get your questions in, the odds of it getting selected are higher. So I would highly encourage you to go over there right now, astrologyhub.com slash Frank answers. Anything you want to add about the, the show before we move on to this, this show's topic? Sure. Yes. Um, just that uh, it's really particularly people who have been upset by uh, interpretations in the past and they're looking to have a positive reframing of a placement, or, or they're worried that they've got Saturn transiting their ascendant, or Pluto coming up to their moon. Um, the the key to the to the show is to help them reframe that, to participate in that, and to recognize the gifts and challenges in natal placements, whether it's their moon sign, Mercury sign, whatever it may be, or aspects, but also uh, transits, upcoming things they may have read about. So it's really about helping. Uh, people reframe it and see it as opportunities to engage in a way that suits them, in a way that feels authentic for them. Yeah, I love this. Frank, thank you so much. Again, this is it's so exciting for us at Astrology Hub. I hope you're all excited to participate in this new show. And um, we'd love to hear your questions. And no question is is dumb or stupid. No question is off limits. And no question is, um, you know, just ask and and you'll see as the show continues um the kinds of questions that frank's going to be selecting but we're just we're encouraging you to submit your questions and um we'd love to hear from you again that's astrologyhub.com slash frank answers okay all right so this topic for today is the five the top five questions that you hear the most as an astrologer and how you approach these questions so do you want to start with I mean, do you have them ranked? Like, I yes, I I've got them in my head. Absolutely. Okay. Um, there, <laughs> there are. Uh, I mean, most astrologers get asked about work, love, and health, and money. And what I've thought of are five that are difficult questions that astrologers get that they often have to reframe, or realize that they're dealing with a question that um, uh, perhaps doesn't understand the very best use of astrology. And one of them is about health. And that can be, how's my health? Is there a problem? Or I've been sick. Um, what do you think is going to happen? And the key to that always is that uh, unless you're unless you've got medical qualifications, uh, we need to avoid that as astrologers. And it's something that I always say to people, I'm not medically qualified to know what's going on with your health. You need to seek out um, help on that. Um, and that includes children because that's probably the most 
sensitive issue. Will I have children? Uh, it, that's a minefield of, of, um, of issues. So I, I tend to opt out of that one. It's a tough one that comes up a lot. What I do with that question sometimes is to think in very simplistic terms. For example, I think of the sun sign or the moon sign or the ascendant sign, the rising sign, and help them uh, with things that would uh, would be very good exercise wise or strengthening that. So we know that every sign has a link to a part of the body. And it might be that, for example, you might encourage somebody with strong Leo energy to look after their back, to strengthen their back, to ensure that they're, uh, they've got good posture. Uh, you want a Gemini or any of the air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, to really sit down and actually do some deep breathing rather than just live on that shallow tension of breathing. So there are some things that I will talk about health wise, but I really still steer clear of anything that I'm not medically qualified to talk about. So that's the number one of the one of the five questions I get um, asked a lot. Yeah. Frank, what can like can the astrology chart technically can it in the hands of the, the right professional? Can it actually answer some of those questions, though? Can it like tell you if you're going to get sick? Can it tell you what kind of illness you would be inclined towards? Could it tell think, you when you're going to get sick? I think it can tell you uh, what you attract into your life. And often behavior will attract certain illnesses, certain symptoms, etc. So I think a good uh, medical astrologer will be able to see that, mm -hmm. to see that somebody who worries a lot uh, may be prone to X, Y, and Z, you know. Um, in terms of timing, there are probably triggers that a good medical astrologer will um, be very well aware of. Uh, but um, yes, I think in the right hands, it can be as empowering as any other subject. In the wrong hands, it can be, it can be terrifying. And I think we need, uh, yeah, we've all been to astrologers or um, people who predict the future and they talk about illness and death and we always need to step away from people that are doing that um whatever whatever their qualifications as well i mean even doctors <laughs> you, you, you hear you know doctors giving a, a sentence of you have you know two months to live and and 10 years later the person's still alive so i mean yeah it's definitely uh sensitive tricky territory um, yeah. It needs to be treated very sensitively. Okay, so what else? What else? So you hear a lot of questions about health. What else? Yes, and I normally at the beginning of a session, I'll say to somebody, I'm not qualified to talk about health, but we can, as I say, we can talk about things that will improve your general day-to-day -day condition. The second one, of course, is what's going to happen. <laughs> and we astrologers get that all the time. And I, and I think what happens sometimes with astrologers is that they get, um, the ego takes over or the idea that they can be a guru in a way of make of dishing out a prediction. Uh, and my, my first question back is, what would you like to happen? Tell me your context. And I think context is the biggest issue. So um, in some of the questions that people may want to put forward for the Frank Answers show, um, give me a bit of context as well, if you like, because most birth chart is a remarkable tool, but it doesn't tell us what you've been doing with it, who you've grown up with, where you've grown up. It doesn't give us any more information except a set of remarkable energies. And those will manifest in different ways, depending on where you are, the time you've been born into, the society you've been born into, etc. So context is the key to being able to help anybody bring out the very best of their chart. So when people say to me, what's going to happen? Or I've read that uh, Saturn's going to be, I've read in the newspaper, Saturn's going to be moving into my relationship house. And my key is, uh, to that is always um, encouraging people to say, well, what, where are you in your life right now? What is it that you want to participate in? What is going on? And, you know, we can't stop other people making choices that affect us. We can't be, we can't stop being affected by loved ones who are sick or go away or refuse to talk to us. You know, there are different things that we have to adapt to in our lives. What we do know is that when we're having certain transits, when we're involved 
when we're looking at our chart and there are things happening by transit or solar art direction or progression, any of those things, um, the chart, the planets, the cosmos, however you want to think of it, is asking us, how do you want to participate in this part of your life right now? This is a season for Pluto. It's a season for Neptune. Uh, whatever that may mean personally, we're being invited to participate in that uh, to the extent that we want to. So I really avoid making predictions, even if clients come back and say, oh, you were so right, that happened then. It's really from anything that I would have said as a prediction. It's more describing the season that somebody's in. And once you've done that and given people the tools to make the most of that season, it doesn't really matter what events happen. It matters that the person is aware of that and that they're actively participating in their own lives. And that makes a, a huge difference. Simply trying to make a prediction Oh, I think you might move house or your father might pass away. Things that would be totally um, <laughs> wrong to say, I think, um, or to predict, particularly with the health issue. Um, it's really denying somebody an opportunity to be involved in the process, to learn something from that particular season. So my response always is, um, this is what the season is about. How does that fit for you? What would you like out of it? And together, we'll do our very best to, to, um, uh, to participate in that. I love that so much, Frank. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting how the question, what's going to happen, yeah. is already kind of a um, life happening to me sort of question, right? It's already, already assuming that, and of course, like you said, things happen, we're influenced by things around us. And that question is is a complete like feeling like everything's happening. Like what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And instead of how, I love how you reframe that, reframe it to how can you how can you participate in this? This is the energy. This is the way that this is the flavor of what's happening. How do you want to engage with that? And that's it's in, extremely empowering, really. And it's the only way to do it, because the more that we uh, remove ourselves from being in the front seat, in the driver's seat of our lives, the more things just appear to happen to us. Mm -hmm. And we confirm the idea that everything is fated or everything turns out the way that it should or everything happens for a reason. And I'm not quite convinced that's the case, in my opinion. I, I feel that it's not like everything happens the way it should or everything happens a reason my my feeling is that everything happens there are things that happen all the time but can we find meaning in that can we understand the process even if we don't understand the event or can't come to terms with what happened what um what, what's the process what's the meaning how can we find some meaning in that to keep going and I think that's where it can feel more empowering and less feeling like you're being hit by Saturn or Pluto or the latest catastrophe. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel good when we feel like we're getting hit by <laughs> the planets. It's like, you know, Pluto is coming to my uh, sun and Venus. And it, and if I'm thinking of it as like, oh, my God, Pluto's going to come, what, like smash me or, you know, whatever I could be thinking. That is just a such an icky place to be. It's like, okay, Pluto's coming. Like, what's Pluto's invitation? What's Pluto going to ask of me? What, you know, and I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but I know that energy or, like you said, that that energy is going to be there. Yeah. That's right. And if you can understand that, and astrology helps you to understand that, uh, you can look at every possibility of that Pluto. Right. So you can think of where am I feeling victimized? Where do I not have power? Where do I give it over to people? And where are the areas that I can develop a sense of power and renewal, where I can strengthen, I can come out of the chrysalis and emerge as a butterfly. This is all the Pluto images that I, I did earlier in, in January when we when we looked at that very powerful new moon. And so I, that's my, my feeling with it. Understand the process. Being fearful of it uh, is just, it's, it's shutting the door to any sort of participation. Uh, so yes, it's what can I do with it, but also not to just sit there being like Pollyanna where everything's going to be wonderful, to understand what the process is about 
and what it's saying about how we've already got to this stage in our lives. And we've all got work to do. And even areas where you think oh, it's going to be empowering, there's still other areas that perhaps sabotage. And Pluto is, for example, in your case, Pluto is can be incredibly empowering, but it's also about shining a light on the areas that are self-sabotaging, the areas of who we are that might just pull the rug from under us. And this is where paying attention, being conscious of those areas, we we live a new day to co-create something rather than just sit there and think, wow, it's kicking my ass <laughs> full stop. <laughs> yes, that word co-create. And that to me is just like the highest invitation of astrology. It's like, here it is. Here's where you're at. How do you co-create with it? And yes, it's not always comfortable. I mean, I think by definition, a Pluto transit's probably not going to be the, the one where you feel comfortable all the time, but that, but there's so much, there's so much juice in that. If when we work with it consciously, like you're saying, okay, awesome. So number one is health questions. Number two, what's going to happen? What's number three? <laughs> number three is often what a client has read about their chart already. And it's, and we've spoken about this before, Amanda, where it's, and it's going to be a big theme of uh, the workshops I'm doing with you, the frank answers, is again key to reframing that. But they've they've read uh, that they've got a position that's bad, weak, debilitated, messed up, and what it's done is latched on to what we all have, and that's a fear of not being perfect or not being good enough. So they'll read somewhere, well, you've got a debilitated Venus or Mercury, and then they think. <gasps> Well, that's a nasty word, isn't it? Debilitated. <laughs> and then they'll read about what that means. And it will link to something that they deeply, deep down fear about themselves. It won't link to the truth of who they are. It will link to the fear of what they think they could be or what they think they've always been. Mm. And so having a debilitated Venus equals I won't be happy, I'm not lovable, um, I won't have any money, um, I won't get married, all the, all the crazy things that it doesn't mean at all. It's just that latching on to a fear. And so what I often have to do with students and clients, if they know a little bit, a dangerous amount of astrology where they've read something that's upset them, is to, again, try to reframe that. So it's important in my view to spend some time engaging in that. What does it mean to you? What does that, what did that trigger in you when you read that? Um, what does it feel like it's confirming? And let's let's re reconfigure that. So it's about dismantling fears and prejudices. And I I'm constantly shocked. And you know, we're not all perfect <laughs> by any means. And I'm sure there are things that I've written and said over the years that haven't been as good as I would have liked to have said them, of course. But I'm always shocked how the the things that we read sometimes are incredibly judgmental and they're without heart and they're without creativity to open the door. And I would love to be able to just keep supplying people with books and ideas and, and wh whatever I can with um, possibilities, uh, exploring placements in imaginative ways. Because what often happens is that astrology in, in the judgmental area can give you a load of complex techniques and it comes up with very simple, simplistic or unsophisticated interpretations, black or white, good or bad, yes or no, right or wrong, left or right, all those things. When in fact, astrology is actually full of simple techniques that can lead to very deep and helpful interpretation. So it's mm. the reverse of what it should be. So mm. often the questions that come in early are fearful. And I, I was in Turkey a few years ago giving a lecture before the whole COVID thing, and I got everyone to write down, they were all student astrologers, I got them all to write down the thing they feared the most in their charts. And it was amazing how many other people wanted what they feared and said, that sounds like a fabulous aspect. I could do with that. So it was so interesting that from our perspective, we can hook into ah, um, 
negative interpretations of placements. So that's one of the things that I try and undo. Um, and it's one, one of the common questions I think astrologers get, uh, whatever, whatever you're doing, whether you're teaching or practicing. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting, Frank. I became friends with the woman who gave me my first reading. And sometimes she would, she would give me readings and I would repeat back what I heard. And she would say, it's so interesting that you heard that because A, I didn't say it like that and I never would. And B, what about all the other things that I said in that same context, but I only heard the thing that I interpreted might be negative, the thing that I was afraid of. And so I was like literally selectively filtering what I heard from her. And, and we do this in, in so many circumstances, right? Like if someone, if a, if a hundred people give us feedback and one person says something negative, it's the one thing we remember. Why do you think we do that? Because it's a bit, yes, it's a little bit like your family telling you you're beautiful and lovable, but we need to hear it from complete strangers. There's right. something about the need to, um, I guess I guess the negativity that one bit is this constant pressure we have to try and be perfect, mm. uh, and and it's great to be striving. I think it's great to be looking at consciously looking at who you are and how you behave, uh, and to address those things. And you, if you're aware of that, you certainly see it come back. Uh, but often the negativity that we hear that we take on board is not really about us, it's who is telling us that. And I think it's important that we we don't own everything that we hear. And yet the temptation is to realize that it's, uh, to not realize it's about the other person and to think it's about our process. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that can be a challenge too. Mm. Well, I'm excited that every single week you're gonna be on the Astrology Hub platform reminding us to to see it more uh, as objectively as we can and to take the pieces because there's there can be gold in that in the feedback even if it isn't comfortable to hear it but not let it take us down like we're just we're not worthy as humans anymore because someone so and so said something so yeah very good and, and the interesting thing is what you said about your experience is that sometimes with a client at the end of the session i'll say when you re-listen or if we've, we've spoken about something particularly personal or important, I'll say to them, is there anything about what we've said that worries you or makes you anxious? And mm -hmm. um, because they often, it's sometimes not even what you say that gets misinterpreted. It's what you don't say that they're expecting or really wanting you to say. And that can be part of the issue as well. So I often um, invite clients, if we've spoken about very personal things to say, any issues about that or anything that I've not expressed as well as I could have come back to me and ask me to re-explain it because uh, it's people put themselves out in a vulnerable position when they go to an astrologer, of course, and they sometimes elevate the astrologer as the person who knows everything, which of course we don't, and all we are is a, a simple Mercury translators trying to help that meaning, uh, trying to encapsulate the Jupiterian meaning of our craft in Mercury words and mm. acting as translator. So it's um, we're by no means perfect at doing that, and I'm uh, constantly aware uh, aware of that. Yeah, Frank, I've even had experiences with astrologers where it, yes, it's not what they said, it's what they didn't said, but it's my interpretation of why they didn't say it. It's like oh, there's something really bad there that they don't want to tell me because you know, they're sensitive and they don't want to tell me the really bad news. It's amazing how we do these things. Yeah. But yes, and that's why these the skillful uh, craft of astrology, as you do, as you practice it, as so many of the astrologers that we have at Astrology have, it's so important because it truly is, there's a skill <clears throat> and you can't take on everything that the client is processing either. You know, that's that's not necessarily the astrologer's fault that I'm reading into why they didn't say something. That's that's something coming up for me. So yes, lots of lots of opportunities to to see the the patterns in us and to work with them and to take responsibility for the parts that are ours and to to not take responsibility for the parts that aren't ours. 
Yeah. Okay. So number three then was um, people coming to you with with fears around certain things they've heard about their chart or their placement or transits and your opportunity to dismantle those fears and offer another way to see things. And it can even be um, good things that they've heard, like Jupiter's in my sign this year. Oh. Um, it, it's, it's I'm going to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, and again, it's, you know, Jupiter's one of those very interesting planets to watch when it transits your chart you've really got to work on with it. You've really got to manifest what it's offering. Otherwise it just comes and goes and you think, hey, that was my Jupiter transit. So um, it, it can be sometimes they come in with great expectations of something, expecting it to just simply happen. Uh, and of course the great one is, well, if I win the lottery, then you know uh, <laughs> it will happen. Well, they expect that with the Jupiter transit. So it doesn't always, it's not always negative things. It can be sometimes they've read something, it's gonna be wonderful and it hasn't um, transpired or they're waiting for it to happen instead of again, engaging in it. I think that's, that's always gonna be the key that I want to get people being proactive. As an Aries with a, a red shirt on right now, you know, that's very much my goal always is to get people to be proactive and be involved uh, rather than just sit back and wait for good or bad or whatever they think is coming. Frank, I've used the ocean analogy several times on different shows. It's the same with the ocean waves. So if we think of the waves, the energetic waves as cosmic waves, right? Mm -hmm. the, in the ocean waves, if you're in a swell of waves and you sit there and you just let them crash and or if you run the other way towards shore, there's a very good chance that you're gonna get pummeled and potentially very hurt. But if you actually move with momentum towards the waves, you will meet them. And normally, I mean, it depends. I mean, I'm, we're not, if they're massive 20 foot waves is a different situation, but you will like fly over the top of them gracefully and land on the other side, but you have to actually meet it. You have to meet the energy or else it, it meets you and it's the force of it takes you down. So I, I think it's the same way with the cosmic waves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number two, then, what's the, what's the second uh, number two most asked questions to astrology? Okay. All right. So, well, number four and number five are both about compatibility, really. Oh, number four and five. I switched the order. <laughs> you switched the order. Okay. So, the, yeah. yeah, number we're doing yeah. a countdown. Okay. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in at number two, <laughs> um, are we compatible? That's a big question astrologers get. Can you look at this chart and tell us if we're compatible? And the the irony of that is that uh, a lot of people aren't even compatible with themselves. They're not quite feeling together in themselves and they're looking for somebody else to supply, to bring into their life something that they need to be doing for themselves often. And I'm not saying we all need to sit on our own and be single. I'm just saying that often what they ask, what they're looking for through someone else uh, is in fact, um, uh, should be should be found from within i think so um i often think you know how compatible are you with yourself if a client comes and wants me to look at two different charts for compatibility i'll usually i will ask for permission if i'm going to be looking at somebody else's chart of course ethically i'm going to ask permission um, i need their permission for me to look at it but i'll normally say let's just focus on your chart because it's your moment with me, it's your hour and 15, hour and a half. Let's focus on what it is that you need. Let's get that clear rather than what somebody else is, what somebody else might or may, may or may not bring into your life. So the key to being in a good relationship is to understand yourself, understand your needs and being compatible uh, with your own needs, I think is probably the first the first step. And it leads us to our number one, which is about, you know, when will I get married or when will I meet the right person? And we know as astrologers, there are certainly aspects by transit, solar arc, et cetera, that trigger off and you can see. Um, there's not one aspect. There can be a number of different things that, that occur that, that we astrologers notice. But those planets don't cause relationships to begin or end. People do, you know? Um, the, there's no guarantee that you've got a transit happening and it's one of the 
top five that people see in relationship. Um, if you're at home doing nothing, nobody's going to turn up at the door knocking and saying, will you marry me? You know. Um, so we again, it's about actively participating in it. But in all serious, and I'm not making fun of anybody who's got you know, relationship issues, of course. Um, the, uh, the idea, again, of will I get married or when will I get married takes away the idea that um, you'd be focusing on your needs, um, understanding what it is that you want in relationships. And I always think that we, uh, when we start to treat ourselves better, we get into better types of relationships, friendships, uh, family relationships, relationships on a, uh, any sort of personal or business level. So I think the key, instead of when will that happen or who will it be or are we compatible, those two big questions I get a lot of, and I'm sure astrologers do, it's drawing people back and saying, um, what, it is that, what is it that you need? Um, what is it that you're searching for that you need to fill for yourself? Um, we know that astrologers, as astrologers, we attract people who have what we lack. So if we're not very earthy and grounded, we look for somebody that can do that for us. At the same time, though, we tend to look for people who are different from us, but then we want to make them into carbon copies of who we are. It's like, well, you've got to be the following. And that's, <laughs> that, that can be equally a, a disaster in that sense. Um, I often say in relationships, forget about the idea of compromising who you are. Adapt, accommodate, but be absolutely clear on who you are. And if you find somebody that can't love you in that way, uh, then have a different type of relationship with them or no relationship with them. So I would say the big killers of relationships are expectation, obligation, and comparison. Oh. Uh, they're the big ones. So they're the two big questions, number two and number one <laughs> in our hit list. And it's so interesting that it, again, it's saying, will astrology bring that in instead of, will I get to a point where I can have a relationship worthy of me? Wow. And how do people usually respond to that? And because I, I know they, they probably have a very sort of, I can just imagine that I would have a, a real need to know. And to have that answer might be like, oh, shoot, like, I just kind of want to know the answer to that. So how do you see people responding to it? Well, I, I don't do that monologue I just gave you, you know, that, okay. would, be too much. <laughs> that would be overwhelming. They'd think, well, you know, thank you very much, but uh, get off your soapbox. Um, I, I might say, well, you know, it's more important to look at your chart. Let's take a look at that. Um, and, you know, astrology, again, can provide you the great thing about transits and directions and not predicting the future, but they're giving you an opening for a particular season. So we can, I could say to people from their chart, uh, October, November, great time to go back on the dating scene if you want to, if you want to. You know, we can, astrology gives us remar a remarkable tool for timing, mm -hmm. but not for uh, guarantees uh, or this is definitely going to happen here uh, or you will definitely meet somebody next Friday, etc., cetera, uh, and, and tell them exactly where that is. That might, that's the, the, the domain of a very good psychic, for instance, somebody that may be tuning into that. Um, so, yes, that's <laughs> um, I don't tend to go off on one and say that a lot to to um, to clients, but I do bring them back to focusing on their needs and say to them, look, a couple of great months this year, end of the end of the month, whenever a couple of great times to to get out and get out and about. And I'll leave it as open as that without promising anything, um, because, again, it will be very much how much they want to be involved. Uh, but self-understanding, self-compassion, uh, all of that is going to be a key. We teach people how to treat us. I think that's a, that's a, a key point. And if we're not treating ourselves well, uh, we're not going to get that. We're not going to get a level um, of, of love from other people that does us justice. Mm. We treat people how to treat us. That is beautiful. 
Okay, Frank, I think this question from Teal is really interesting. Uh, it's, I would have thought that number one was purpose. Like purpose didn't even make the, the top five. Is that not, do people don't really come to you with like, what am I doing here on this planet? You know, they don't, oddly enough. But I, that's one of the first things that I will do. I will sum that, that up in the chart. So maybe they just don't get a moment to actually ask it because I'm straight in there. As an Aries, you know, uh, with with you know, Mars on the MC, I'm like purpose. And often what I'll do when I spend the first 10, 15 minutes looking at the natal chart is to say the chart suggests you were born to do this or um, this is what you signed up to do. And I'll ask them whether that how they're doing it if it if it if it speaks to them and so i think i go straight into purpose naturally so maybe people just don't get a moment a word in edgeways <laughs> because i'm already answering that that's one of the first things i will do so great question um but it's something that i automatically assume that's part of my job to try and define it with the tools that i've got not impose it on somebody but to say you know your chart is suggest the great communicator, a great salesperson, a great uh, compassionate heart, whatever it may be. Mm, yes. Okay. Can we play with this with just one, maybe two questions that I think you'd be able to answer more? I'd, it'd just be fun to see how you would answer it. If you don't, if, if you don't want to, you could just say, uh, I'm yep. okay, okay. Oh, awesome. There's a couple of questions that came through that are interesting. Um, one from Nadia. It's, I have felt so disconnected from the stars lately, which is abnormal for me. Okay. What's going on? Okay. And when she said disconnected, does she mean um, from the literal stars, from the cosmos? I'm wondering um, what she means. And um, I, mm, that's, that's an interesting question. I would want to know what it would take for her to feel reconnected and whether that's right for her right now. Because I think it's important if people are disconnected for a while, there may be a reason for that. It may be that they actually need a little bit of grounding. If we think about the stars, we think about being up here in the head or the heart. And sometimes the season is for getting in touch with the body, getting in touch mm. with the garden, with nature. So I probably want to know a little bit more about um how she's feeling being disconnected whether that's actually working for her um or whether it's uh it's something that is feeling um awkward or uncomfortable and then mm -hmm. i'd if it was uncomfortable i'd ask um what is it that you that you've stopped doing what is it that's that's changed that we can perhaps talk about bringing back into your life mm, yeah like maybe where where has she become disconnected from herself on any level right Yes, yes. You know, one of the great things that I say to people is dance. Turn the music up and dance because there's something very Pisces about dance, very Virgo. It's The, the dance is the Virgo-Pisces axis in my head. Ooh. And it's about getting back in touch with the body in within rhythm. And it's amazing what people give up in their lives that they love to do. Mm. One of the things that I do in a consultation or will 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 do with the Frank Answers or anywhere else on Astrology Hub is to get people um, back in touch with the things that brought them joy. And so I'll often say to people, um, uh, what is it that will bring you joy right now? What is it you used to do? And they say, oh, I used to love dancing, but I'm too old, which is one. That's another another comment you hear uh, or my my feet aren't as good as they were, or I've got no dance partner. And these are all great excuses to not keep participating and bringing joy into your life. So I'll be a little bit of a devil's advocate sometimes with people and say, well, um, yeah, that, they sound, that, that's an excuse. What about getting back? What about going online and looking for local groups or just dancing on your own, doing something? Um, so often dance, often music, often poetry, reading, solitude, swimming, anything where we can take ourselves out of that headspace that is constantly analyzing, criticizing, judging ourselves and what we've done or, or, or what we're doing um, and get back to something that's more rhythmic. And so I would probably, I'd probably go there as well. Mm. And it's one of the reasons why we named the show Frank Answers. I mean, clearly 
were with Frank Clifford, so it made sense. But also, your your Frank in your responses, it's clear. It's it's. I like that you're going to tell us things that might be like, oh, like okay, you know, you're going to put it back in again. It's us taking the responsibility for the choices we're making and the way we're showing up for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. I hope so. That's the key. I mean, I'm pretty frank. And my dad was also frank, interestingly. <laughs> and uh, we were both pretty frank in, in what we did. And that's why I use the initial in my name in my books and everything, because my dad was Frank Clifford. So it's easier, easier for that. But um, yes, I it's important to be direct. And sometimes it's important to challenge people in a in a caring way, and I do it, I try to do it with humor, I try to do it with um, with care, but sometimes it's important to just um, get somebody to look at what they're telling themselves, mm -hmm. and that might be a, a, a trigger uh, into something new without necessarily harassing them or upsetting them or, or feeling like they're being attacked, uh, but to slightly push them into a, slight, a slightly different um, arena at times, yeah. That's also what we love about you, how compassionate you are in your delivery. And it's, it's, it's so obvious that you care. It's coming from a very loving place. So that makes that makes the frankness yeah, work. Yes. OK. All right. One more question. This is I, I can't see the person's name. It just says Facebook user. Uh, but Frank, is there a special way to prepare to read for someone? Um, who, OK, hold on. Frank, is there a special way to prepare to read for someone you can see in the chart? may have a hard time hearing what you tell them. So is there a special way to create the space so so they're maybe more open and willing to hear what you have to say, is how I'm yeah. translating that. Yeah, thank you, yes, I, I think so. What I often look at is the person's mercury and the person's moon. And I think, how are they going to hear it on an intellectual level and how are they gonna hear it uh, on an emotional level? And uh, I had a, somebody in a lecture once and she had a moon uranus conjunction in libra and the way she asked the question i knew that she needed a completely different answer from the one she normally got with that placement because she hadn't heard anything satisfactory about that and i thought okay i'm being asked to approach her in a way that's a little bit more provocative but different coming from a different angle but uh, in terms of preparation coming back to the question um yes look at them but also i think by describing what you do at the beginning of any sort of session, how you do it, setting them up so they don't feel judged, uh, describing that, and then saying what the, what the chart suggests, often depersonalizing it, that can be a key. So instead of saying, I think you are X, Y, and Z, or Z, um, instead of saying that, you can say, when I've seen that in the chart before, I've often noticed that the people are X, Y, and Z. Mm. Uh, and depersonalize so they don't feel like oh i'm just being categorized or i'm being told who i am and so you can be incredibly encouraging looking at purpose um getting some feedback asking how that manifests in their lives but at the same time do it in such a way that they don't feel put in the hot seat so there's a sensitivity I've learned because I've said all the wrong things at all the wrong times over the years. And we say too much and we we try to impress and the ego talks instead of the astrology, all different things that we learn to put into the cupboard. Uh, so, yes, I would I'd just be sensitive about um, leading them in. Most people coming in for readings, for consultations, are nervous about what you might say, what you might know, what you might predict. Mm -hmm. And so sitting down and giving them an idea of your point of view, even if they've read that on a website already, really helps, I think, um, them feel safe in your hands. And I do a thing called the consultation chart, which I will teach at some point, I'm sure, um, to everyone. Uh, and it's a great insight into understanding why a client has come to see you. It's a chart for the moment of the consultation. And that can be a great icebreaker where you say, I think you come because X, Y, and Z, and they, and they feel like, oh, goodness, I don't have to say it, or I don't feel judged. Or So there can be different ways of doing it, but as long as you, they don't feel accused or judged um or you know i think also they they need to be in charge of what is said 
in terms of what they reveal. We shouldn't push people to reveal any more than they feel comfortable with. So as we're treading very gently and always leave the moon for a bit later in the consultation, because that's the very sensitive bit, as we're treading gently, um, get some feedback all the time get them to to talk about that uh, as much as they as much as they wish to but um, certainly do it sensitively yeah. i love that so much frank because in 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 presenting it like you know here's things that i've seen with you know placements like this in the past they can even at that point they can jump in and say yes oh my gosh i've experienced that or not you know maybe yeah. it's like oh like okay that, but but even if they if they validate it verbally or not, it's giving them space for that to be okay. You know, for that to be, yeah. you know, not something to feel so like shameful or embarrassed or or guilty or whatever about. And tension arises when the astrologer tries to prove the chart to somebody, wow. and if it doesn't fit, then the astrologer gets tense and tries to prove it, tries to make it fit, and. A consultation should be a shared experience to help the client, not to prove how good you are at reading a chart. Mm. And you often see that very badly done with people. And they'll say, well, you're this and you've got that. And they try to impress with what may have happened in the past instead of saying, how can I help? Why are you here? Um, uh, and instead of setting yourself up as the one who knows all the answers, who can make the predictions and I think that's where we go wrong when when the ego steps in as being the astrologer worth two hundred dollars an hour or whatever, and uh, instead to say, okay, before I start, anything you want me to focus on, anything I can help with, and really set it up that you're not the guru who knows everything, and you're not going to be making silly unethical predictions you're going to be having a conversation a dialogue and that is one of the great things that we can do and it turns it, it gets the client to actually be more involved in the session instead of sitting there saying hmm, well you're 80 percent right and he didn't tell me about whatever uh you know we're, we're inviting a dialogue and i think that's where astrology comes alive so great. Frank, this is going to be so fun. I'm so honored that you're going to be with us every single week. Uh, so for those of you interested in submitting your questions for Frank Answers, and if you joined us late, you, you may not know what I'm talking about. This is the newest show that we're going to have on the Astrology Hub platform. Frank's going to be answering your questions. So there's a form that we have already set up where you can submit your question. You can submit your chart with it if you want. You don't have to. But if you want to submit your chart or your birth information, you can do that. And Frank's going to be choosing a question every week to answer. And I hope you can see just from this little glimpse that we've done today that no matter what the question is, you're going to learn something. I mean, you're going to learn something even if it's not a direct question that you have. Maybe it's just learning about a gentle approach to how to answer these kinds of questions for people in your own life. Or maybe it's going to help you know, uh, heal something within you that you didn't even know you were struggling with. So this is so amazing and exciting. And it's, it's something that we've known for a long time. And I tried to do it in different formats before. It's like having a place where you guys can come and ask your questions and you can see really good, high quality uh, astrology at work. You know, so it's, it's doing two, two things. It's, it's answering the question, but it's also modeling um, a, a way that astrology can be done that's honoring and respectful and helpful and useful um, and really giving the power back to the person asking the question, um, which is just such a beautiful thing. So Frank, yay. Um, if you have questions that you, you want to submit, you go to astrologyhub.com slash Frank answers. We're going to be starting next week. Uh, the show is going to be every Thursday. Um, and they're going to be about, wait, Thursday? Am I messing that up? That's right. No, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's sometimes I, when I'm here, I, I, I miss, mess up details like that. Um, and each show is going to be anywhere from like five to 20 minutes. And so it'll be the kind of thing that you can listen to while you're, you know, doing other things, but you'll be able to get some great insights. So please go ahead. You're, you're some of the first person, people hearing this information, which means you'll be some of the first people 
capable of submitting your questions. And Inner Circle members, we are going to be making a special point to answer as many of your questions as possible too. So make sure that you indicate that you're an Inner Circle member. Um, what else? I think that's it for now. Well, the workshops. So we are gonna be doing a series of workshops with Frank starting in July. So July, we're gonna be doing one workshop. And then in September, we're gonna be doing, um, it's like three workshops, but it's kind of like a three week course. And it's gonna be all about this going very detailed into uh, how to reframe some of these things that we understand as negative, bad, not good. And he's gonna be going through lots of detail on how to actually reframe those, but more information on that to come. For now, submit your questions. Anything else you wanna say, Frank, before we wrap up? Uh, just that um, with the questions, I if there are similar questions, I'll try and group a few together as well. So it may not just be one a week, but it might be something that people have asked that that's similar, and I'll try and bring it into the conversation as well. So I'll do my best for that as well. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks everybody so much for being here. We love having you in this community. Thanks for joining. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Thanks for all your comments in the chat. We've been reading them. For those of you who uh, listen to this recording later, uh, please feel free to submit your questions for Frank Answers. This is going to be a very fun journey that we are all embarking upon with Frank today. So, Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you very soon. Thanks for making astrology a part of your life. Take care. Thank you.